And I think we're live. Hello, everybody. For those of you on Twitch, this is going to be the second half of this playthrough today. However, because I finished Dustin and Lee Singtel. How well is this going to run? Light, what, dark, uh, hold on, let me close that and open it again. So... Main menu. Yes, quick without saving. Sorry, let me, uh, restart from the beginning. Sadly, I cannot get this into a super perfect aspect ratio, which is what I wanted. Um, hold on. Is there a way I can actually, like, have it so it doesn't maintain... As okay. yeah, I'll throw a TV filter and I'll turn off auto pause. Anyway, uh, let's try this. Eh, that's still not working well. Um, what happens if I do full screen? Uh, yes, go to the main menu. Options. What happens if I crank this thing to full screen? Well, it's working. Okay. This should work, all things considered. Uh, let's see how the frame rate is. In ages long forgotten. Light brought darkness for control of the world. Dark Dragon led the evil hordes of darkness. The ancients fought back with the powers of light. Dark Dragon was defeated and cast into another dimension. The Lord of Darkness vowed to return in 1,000 years. Time passed, and Dark Dragon was forgotten by all. Ten centuries of peace ruled the land of Rune. Until the kingdom of Runeplast brought war and fear to Rune. Hordes of evil creatures ravaged every land. Here and there, strongholds of good still held out. Awaiting a hero who could wield the powers of light. Shining Force, the legacy of great intention. Man, this game takes me back. Oh. Will my controller work? That is the question. I don't know if it will. I don't think it will. 
Wow. What voice am I going to do for her? Sadly, unlike Dusty Elysian Tail, this game does not have voice acting. It kind of does, with the whole, everyone has a different sound for, like, the blip for text and box advancing, but they don't actually read out their things. That's important. I don't know. Wow. Dark Dragon? Ancients? Let's see now. What else does this old book say? Hmm. One thousand years have passed since they reigned for Dark Dragon. And this book says Dark Dragon threatened to return right about now. I bet anything that Dark Dragon is behind the evil hordes of Rufus. I need to tell someone about this, but who would listen to a kid like me? I think Dark Dragon's coming back. Will you help us? Come on, it'll be an adventure! Yeah. Sure. Pick an adventure. So, we have three different save boxes. We also uh, have save states because we're playing this not on the original Genesis. I'm playing this as part of the Sega Master Collection thingy majigger on Steam. Because this game was on sale and it includes like a bunch of classic Genesis games. Dredgen. <sighs> this game is so nostalgic for me. <laughs> I know this game like the back of my hand. I memorized the story, basically. That's what happens when you play a game for like 15 to 20 years. So I've been playing this game ever since I was 5, and I'm like 28 now, so... Yeah. And occasionally I do find myself coming back to it, just to play it again. Here, anyway, we'll do Adventure 1. Uh, oh right. That's the confirm button. I have mapped. I have mapped controls on here that aren't super great, but they work. What shall I call you? So, fun fact about this, you can name the character whatever you want to. However, the default name in the files is Max. So, I'll be going by the name Max. Um, mainly because that's the default name in the files. Uh, huh, now I'm curious about my old PS2 game that has a bunch of Sega games like Shiny Boys on it. Wouldn't be a bad thing to check. Also, welcome to the stream, Surter. This is technically a brand new stream, so there we go. Uh, but yes, so the default character's name is Max. However, they don't actually ever tell you that in the actual game. You can name it whatever you want to. Um, however, I personally am going to go with Max just because, you know, it's the default character's name, so I'm just going to go with it, because I usually go with the default character's name in, uh, games. It's better than just calling him the main character continually, which is what I used to do as a kid back before I knew that his name was Max. I just kept calling him the main character over and over and over, which got kind of annoying to try and say, but I couldn't think of another name. But anyway. Nice to meet you, Max. I'm Simone. Come back often and tell me everything. You need to get going. Evil spreads farther across Rune with every passing day. Chapter 1. Runefoot's Invasion. This game has a lot of dialogue, I will say. However, none of it's read out, except the actual voice for the actual, like, uh, sound for the text scrolling is different for every character. So it's kind of voice acting, but not really. Because everyone has their own distinct noises for talking, but it doesn't actually... Uh, it's not actually voice acting, like proper voice acting. But then again, they couldn't do proper voice acting on the Genesis. So. Max? Max? Come on, kid, wake up. I didn't hit you that hard. So it's like Undertale dialogue boxes. Yes, it's basically Undertale dialogue, way before Undertale was a thing. This game was produced, I believe, back in 1993, which was the same year I was born. Keep your guard up, kid. Those beasts of Rufus will tell you to pieces. Okay, that's enough for today. You'd better take it easy for a while. So yes, here we are. We're actually in the world. The year I saw. Yep. This is our character, Max. Uh, if we go down to... Not that. Um, 
We can't really inspect our stats right now, unfortunately. We kind of can. Yeah, here we go. Can't hear. So we start with 14 attack, 4 defense, 6 movement, and 4 agility. Um, every single stat maxes out at 99, except for movement, which maxes out at, like, 9. Yeah, we've seen this overworld before. Cool. And we start out with a middle sword, which is actually pretty good. Uh, it gives us a bonus 8 attack. Anyway, this is a character I don't remember the name of, but he's basically our mentor, and he'll only be around for, like, the first part of the game. Uh, no, Max, I think you've had enough for today. I will say, I have memorized every single secret in this game, so if you're coming here for a, uh... If you don't want to be spoiled about anything in Shining Force, and you want to experience it for yourself, go play it now. Because watching me play, I'm going to spoil every single little secret that's in the game, and this will be a 100% completion playthrough. Which, if you don't know what 100% completion is for Shining Force, it's getting every single character. That is 100% completion, getting every single character. And also, arguably, it's getting the two hidden items. But they're not that hard to get, so it's... And those aren't really required. This, unlike Dust, this game does not have a completion screen. Usually I go off of all the characters and the secret items. That's usually my thing for completion. And some of the characters are actually really, like, easy to miss. And if you miss a character, you never get a chance to get them again. So, yeah. Or you play again. Well... Well, Max had enough swordplay for today. I don't know how you keep at it after hour after hour. I'm dead tired after 15 minutes. You have the makings of a great fighter, Max. You'll be tested soon enough. Lord Varius, the king has sent you. Has sent for you. You must come at once. Of course. Lead the way, guardsman. I fear the worst, Max. Prepare yourself for true battle immediately. And he is right to tell us to prepare. Did you see Varus's face? He went pale! Something really big is happening! Let's split up and see if we can't find out what's going on. I'll see you later! Yes. That character's name is Lo. We'll meet them later. So yes, you can talk to each of the villagers if you want to. Uh, talking to the villagers, for the most part, won't do anything, but for the sake of the stream, I'll do it. I'm sick of feeling helpless. I'm going to ask Varius to train me to be a fighter. You say the same thing? Okay. Sometimes I say something different if you talk. Eh? What's the, uh... What's the... I can't do an old man voice. I don't have an old man voice, I just realized. Uh... Eh? What's a youngster like you doing moping around? Get out and fight evil. I don't do a good old man's voice. I'm sorry. I tried to do, like, a Master Roshi-style voice, but I just really couldn't do that there. Because they look like Master Roshi to me. But with, like, big bushy eyebrows. Take another sip of water. Alright, let's talk to the priest. Hello, Max. I've been... Hello, Max. I've been having the worst nightmares. Have you had any? Um, yes. I bet they're the same ones I've been having. I saw our land in ruins. Evil creatures roamed our halls. It seemed so real. He's getting visions of the future. Ooh. And yeah. Enemy uh, NPCs are either static or moving around in a set pattern. Uh, with some exceptions. NPCs do not actually move around in a set pattern, believe it or not. They just randomly choose which direction they want to move based off of like a random choice thing. Like, for example, they'll randomly choose to move up, left, down, or right based off of RNG and their own, like, internal variables. Which is notable, because if you stand here, you can prevent them from moving up and allow them to move sideways. You can, like, stop them from moving a certain direction by just being in the way, and they can't move that direction anymore. So, you can do that to get to a very specific area I'm going to talk about in a second. Uh, I won't do it right now. But, well, I, 
I'll go ahead and turn this off. So, uh, let's go ahead and talk to this person first, though. We're gonna show off something you can't do. Someday, I hope to go to Mar... Uh... Manarina to become a mage. Manarina is a place we'll go to later. Let's use this guy, so... Have you seen my cart? It rolls away all the time. Needs new brakes, I guess. So that guy will be useful for us. However, you see these guards by this gate down here? That gate to the outside? If I moved one more space downwards, they would run in front of the gate and block the way. However, I have a way to prevent that. Kind of. I can get this guy to move uh, down there. Which I can do. I can get him to move down and sideways. Uh, do I have a way to make a save state? I just realized. Yeah, I can do that. Make a save state there. Yes, override data. Because I want to show something off. I'm going to show this off, but then after I do it, I'm going to undo it with my save slot. Because I want to actually progress the story normally and not skip anything. Yeah, we can get him to move down. Ah, darn it. The movement in this game is a little finicky sometimes. So yeah, I'm going to do all the little glitches and all the little... Uh, Silly things you can do in this game. Including this. Oop. Nope, you're not moving upwards. Come on. Down. Oop. Stop trying to move up. There you go. Now you're moving down. Oh, oh, oh. Aha! You almost got me. Nope, you're not moving back up. You can get these guys to wander all the way down here. And it's only really useful in this area, but this is a trick you can do to basically have this guy block one of the guards. NPC tries to go up. Max, you shall not pass! Yes, indeed. <laughs> I'm trying to get this guy to go in front of that guard so that when I try to walk through the gates, he's blocking the guard and the guard won't be able to block the way, meaning I can actually skip the intro section and go do the first fight without even finding out why I'm doing the first fight. Of course, I'm going to undo that with my save slot for this, uh, and do the story normally. I just want to show this off. See, he can block the guard, as you can see there, but obviously uh, I need him to be on the other side of the guard. Oh, other side of the guard, please. There we go. Down? Oh. That's good enough. Oh, boop, boop. Ah, fudge. Okay, but you see how that would have worked. If he didn't move to the right, that would have worked. But now he's just kind of trap-trapped, and the guards don't reset until you reload the area. So I'm not going to try again. But yeah, you can use this to get out of the gate faster if you want to. Uh, and I sometimes do that in casual playthroughs just so I can go train before I get most of my team members. Because basically doing that skips getting every single one of your team members and it's just Max by himself. Speed one tactics. Uh, not really because that goes way slower than the actual speed run way of doing it, but yeah. Uh, if you want to do that in a speed run, you need RNG. <laughs> uh, anyway, you want to make sure to talk to this guy, because his name is Gord. Little tip, by the way. Any character that has a picture in the top left is either very important or someone who is recruitable. Just pointing that out. Anyone with a picture that actually shows up in the top left is either recruitable or is someone very important that, for the story. Bort is one of these people. He is recruitable. However, to recruit him, 
And also, uh, I'm actually not going to read out all the dialogue. You can read the dialogue on your own, when you play it on your own. Uh, but yeah, to recruit him, you need to talk to him once and listen to his story. Show him that kids actually care. Uh, sadly, I'm going to have to bump into this cart, which is going to push it on him. I'm not going to talk to him, though, because he's going to be pissed off at me. But that way I can go in here. Uh, I thought there was something I could get in here. Guess not. Either way. Uh, most of the NPCs don't actually do anything if you talk to them. They just give you info, and I don't really need the info. Uh, here's an inn, in case you want to go to an inn, but you can't really sleep in the beds. So there's no point in it. Hello! Howdy, Thorin, uh, Thorfinn. Welcome to the channel. Playing Shining Force, which is a big nostalgic game from my past that I deeply enjoy. I've already talked to Gord. Uh, and I just got done finishing Dust and Elysian Tale. So I figured, hey, since I'm going to have to be playing a brand new game anyway on Tuesdays, why not be another game that's deeply nostalgic for myself? Alright, I'll read the main story stuff and I'll, like, the side stuff. Uh, I just didn't feel like reading board style. That is the st that is the story, Various. Hmm. Then, Your Majesty, we have no choice but to send Max, a young fighter. Oh, Max, good. I was looking... I was going to look for you. Well, first, listen to the game. For centuries, our people have watched the Gate of the Ancients as its, the guard, as its guardians. Beyond that gate lies we know not what, and not even if it is of the light or darkness. But the Ancients knew, and they sealed it beyond the gate and set us as guards. I recently finished a stream playthrough of this game. Oh, cool! You stream as well, nice. And now we find... And now we find that we may have failed in our mission, our reason for existence. Signs have been seen that forces of ruthless are at the gate of the ancients. Whatever evil they are planning, we must stop it at all costs at once. But we must not panic the people. A small group of young but skilled warriors. Yes, you could do it. You could leave town unnoticed and have a chance to succeed, perhaps. Yes, Nova, I agree. Max, will you take this task? Uh, sure. Very well. Now return to town and gather your troops. Come back when you're ready. So, uh, just so you know, Thorfinn, I will be doing a 100% playthrough of Shining Force where I get every single secret, every single thing, and I'll be showing off a lot of the major glitches in the game that I have found personally. Uh, cause I have been playing this game ever since I was five, and I'm like 28, so I've been playing this game for 23 years now. <laughs> Anything special if you say no? Uh, I believe if you say no, he just... Various just says... Oh, but come on, Max, you have to do it! Like, come on, Max, if you don't save the world, no one will! And then the king tells you to go do it anyway. Basically, if you say no, the game just makes you do it anyway. Unfortunately. Wait! What what voice am I gonna do for Luke? Wait, Max! Nova sent us! We're going with you! I am Luke the Warrior! In the night at your service, Max! I'll follow you wherever you lead! I am Tao. I'm only an apprentice mage, but I'll do my best. I am Hans, an elven archer. I'm coming, but don't put me in the front lines, okay? So you'll be finding the special outfits for Tao and Anri, as well as the Kenji? Um... I don't know where to find the Kenji, but I know where to find the special outfits for, Ta for uh, Tao and Anri. I'm pretty sure... I don't remember where you get the Kenji, but I know where you get those other two. Uh... 
I know some games have a special thing if you refuse to go on an adventure. Yeah, I mentioned the Golden Sun one before, where it just gives you a game over. But in this game, they just basically say, Oh, but come on, if you won't do it, any so uh, no one will. And then you just have to do it anyway. Are uh, they all waiting at the headquarters? Mina's at headquarters, back in the castle. Yes. Hey, Max, don't try to sneak out of town without me. Lo joins the training force. Yes, everyone has their own class. Uh, some classes are repeated. Now that you have your confidence, return to the king to hear your, his final commands. I'll follow your progress and offer advice as you face the vile hordes of Rufus. Well, that's settled. See you at headquarters. Entry is in the battle before entering Balbazok's fortress. Oh, I know where that is. Okay. Interesting. I'll have to look that one up. Uh, I was not aware that you can get Kenji in the game. Hey, there's still more secrets. Uh, oh wait, you mean Kenji as in, uh, the samurai? Because I can get the sam- I was going to get the samurai, yeah. I know there's no use for Kenji. Uh, none of the secret items really have a use. Ah, okay. Not to one of the game devs. That makes sense. I know there's like some secret items in the files, because I did, uh, I've also done my fair share of Shining Force while hacking. So I know that there's secret stuff in the file. Um, fun fact, by the way, you could just leave at this point if you want to, but if you talk to the king again, you have your troops, but you need supplies. Take this to purchase what you need. He gives you 100 coins. A cart will take you to the Gate of the Ancients. Go now and carry out the task. So yes, the currency in this game is coins, not... It says coins, but uh, it says gold in the top left, which is interesting. Anyway, this I want to show off is the headquarters. There's one of these in every town. And there's Nova. And here's our people. Uh, the reason why this is important, you might notice they're taking up specific slots. You're not allowed to take everyone on your party, you're only allowed to take a maximum of 12 people at once. Including you. So, 11 other party members, basically. Everyone else will be hanging out out back here. And there's well more than, 10, than 12 characters in the game. So, you're going to be getting a lot of party members that you just never end up using. Or just never actually, yeah. Now, there is no random encounters in this game whatsoever. There is absolutely no random encounters. Also, that's a bug. This is a graphical bug. Um, but yeah, there's no uh, random encounters whatsoever in this game. The only way to actually uh, quote-unquote grind experience is to egress out of a battle and repeat it. Anyway, we're being carried on a cart to our first battle, which I'll show that one off. Max! <laughs> Max! Goblins! Runefist must be up to something. We can take them, Max. Move it, Roman! Find the king to find the key to this blasted door! Come on, we're almost in! Where's that blasted key? What? Blast it! Those fools from Gordiana are here! Earthquake! Attack goblins and dwarves! Stack a blow for the honor of Runefist! Alright, so the first battle. So yeah, now we're gonna enter battle. So, turn order is determined by agility. However, it's not just the agility number. Agility doesn't determine, like, what order the turns go in. Agility determines how many turns you get. Besides that, it's more or less randomly chosen who gets a turn. It's just people with higher agility tend to get more turns than people without higher agility. Uh, here's some of the stats of some of the people. Different classes can equip different equipment. This is what the boss has. And yeah, let's do this. And there was an earthquake. So, Pause is an archer, uh, 
catch it. Hogs is an archer, Luke's a warrior, uh, Lo is a healer, which is important. Lo is a mage that focuses on fire magic specifically, and Ken is a knight which uses lances. The warriors use swords and axes. Our character is a swordsman and only uses swords. And then Hans uses a bow. And the other magic users use st staves, which don't actually affect their magic at all. Su surprisingly, staves do not affect their magic. It's just how hard they hit people. Eh, I like that. Pretty much anyone in this game can be viable, providing you actually train them up. Hans is fast, is the thing that he has. Alright. Yep. We have a high agility, so we got another turn. Nice. Another first cop. Attack you, because you have a range science. Attack you from safe distance. Alright. Have you run up and smack them with your wooden stick? Uh, Han sadly cannot get into attack right now. And usually, uh, I'll go over that one thing. Luke, finish him off. There you go. Port experience. Yep, definitely saw a small bits of the game before. That little five second battle music reminded me. Yep. So, uh, experience in this game, how it works, is depending on how high of a level you are, uh, depending on the enemy as well as high, how high level you are will determine how much experience you get. Uh, 100 experience points is required to level up. It will always be the same regardless of what level that you are, it's just you'll start getting less and less experience the higher level that you are. So it's rather than requiring more and more experience to level up, you just get less and less, but it always requires 100. I'm grabbing him heal himself. Just to get more experience. Use more fire! Uh, magic does a set amount of damage. Da the damage of magic does not correspond to anything, it always does a set amount. And it doesn't matter what the enemy's defense is, what your mage's stats are, etc. They always do the same amount of damage for the given spell. Unless the enemy is resistant or vulnerable to a specific kind of magic, in which case he'll do either a double or half. Or it can sometimes do 75% instead of half, but usually it's double or half. However, the majority of enemies in the game don't have any vulnerabilities or resistances. They're just taking neutral damage to things, so that usually doesn't come up. Yeah, nice. And this fight is this first fight is pretty easy. However, I do have some caveats that I do in my playthroughs. Uh, in particular, how I actually handle uh, ingressing out of a fight to get more experience. Basically. If I can do a fight with one, without someone leveling up, and two, without someone dying, then I'll go ahead and finish the fight. If not, then I'll egress out and try it again. So basically, if someone ends up leveling up or if someone dies, that means that I need to do the fight again, is what I'm basically saying. And that's mostly just for my own thing, so that I actually, like, naturally, progressively grind experience over time, because... 
If you don't do that, this game becomes very hard. If you don't actually grind experience. In any capacity. So I do like to do a little bit of grinding throughout my playthrough, and that's the those are the self-imposed rules I put on for how that grinding manifests. And usually that's enough to actually like uh because that, the reason why I picked those rules specifically is because the uh, in my playthrough I finished with a level 29 gang while I that I promoted at level 20. Yeah, that's basically what I'm doing. Is I'm waiting to promote to level 20. Once you reach level 10, you can promote. However, if you wait until level 20, um, you'll get more stats when you promote up. You, level 20 is the maximum level for uh, unpromoted units. They keep leveled up, so... Uh, I also leveled Ala using Bolt 4. Cool! That sounds cool. I love this game. Uh, by the way, uh, for those of you out there who do not know, yes, I Twitch, uh, I will be uploading this stream a week after it is recorded onto my YouTube channel, Fun Fortune 14 on YouTube. Also, uh, if you're on YouTube, you can watch these streams live on Twitch, uh, on my Twitch channel, Fun Fortune 14 on Twitch. Also, I have a Discord. It is in the uh, profile of my Twitch channel, as well as the links of my, as well as the description of my YouTube videos. If you'd like to join the Bug Nest, you can catch my uh, get announcements to catch my streams easier, as well as just hang out with me, and chat. I am now changing my schedule so that this will be on my schedule. For Tuesday, I'll be playing this every single Tuesday for six hours. Because I play, I, I stream every day, Monday through Friday, uh, from 9 a.m. EST to 4 p.m. EST, Eastern Standard Time. Sorry, 10 p.m., sorry, 10 a.m. to 5, 4 p.m. Yeah, that's what it is. Anyone died? No. Okay, let's save. And let's go back in there. Uh, I should probably buy some healing, uh, healing items, so... Eh, I'm not gonna waste my gold. I don't need it. Oh, wait. What? I did not mean to do this. Uh, fudge. <laughs> I did not mean to suspend it. Whoops. Oh, that dialogue always trips me up sometimes. Okay, let me reload it. But yes. Oh, wait. Hold on. I loaded up the standard thing, not the simplified version. Let's close that. Right, right, right. I'm playing this on the uh, Sega Genesis Mega Drive Classics Collection, whatever it is. Uh, simple launcher. Right. I forgot about that. Did you get Gong yet? Nope, I have not gotten Gong yet. I will get Gong after... Uh, I will get Gong after I go back, because, remember, you can't manually walk there until the second time you go to that battle. So... And I, uh, that was the first time I did that battle, so it, it, it carded me all the way there. I was not able to get Gong. Did not save? Hey, I saved, though. I saved. Why did not save? Save slot. Oh, here we go. Uh, wait. Does it not save? Huh. Weird. I lost six game saves when using the Sega Mega Drive launcher. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. 
Let's load slot two. Load this slot. Retro arc was much more reliable. Yeah. Okay, let me just blow through the story again and get back to where I was. I guess I need to manually save this way instead of going through the priest. That's fine. No, Shining Force is always a bit finicky in how it saves. So, it does that sometimes on the emulator too, back when I played this on the emulator. Uh, hey, Th uh, Thorfinn, did you ever own this on the original Genesis? Or did you only ever play it, like, emulated like it is here? Also, uh, if you have not yet, go check out Thorfinn's channel and give him a follow. I know I'll probably do that after next year. Uh, I played it way back in the early 90s. Yeah, I played this game growing up. Uh, it came out the same year I was born, which is 1993. And I played it ever since I was five, so yeah. And uh, I still technically own this on Genesis, but my Genesis is packed in my boxes. I don't want to play that, and plus I wouldn't be able to stream it anyway. So... That's how fast you can get through the dialogue, by the way, if you don't read it. Since I have basically the entire story memorized for the most part, when I play casually, I just skip through all the dialogue because I know everything that already happens. It's not that I don't care, it's that I already know. Anyway, so I guess I'm going to have to save through the actual launcher rather than through the game. That makes sense. Talk to you, get my gold, let's redo that first fight. That's fine, we did not lose we did not lose that much progress, and this is my first time doing this on Twitch. Uh, so technical difficulties are to be expected. Uh What's your favorite character in this game? I'm curious. I'm gonna pick up some magical herbs this time around. Domingo. Yeah, Domingo is a pretty common favorite one. My favorite one is was always Guns, the mechanical one. Just because I love the fact of just ramming into things with a mechanical tank with that's wielding a lance. Did you read the dialogue when you were a kid? I know as a kid I was just like, let me play, get rid of the text. No, I read all the dialogue as a kid too. And for most of my first playthroughs, I read the dialogue. Because I'm, I'm the type of person that likes dialogue. I only started skip throwing it like after a few years of playing the game because I'm like, ah, okay, I already have everything memorized. I don't need to keep reading it over and over. Oh, right, I don't have any more books. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> You guys let me through this time. But yeah, as you see, the cart pulls you. So I can't actually get Gong, because Gong is over on that building to the right there. <laughs> yes. I'm going to defeat Runfist. Earthquake! Alright, let's try this again. Also, by the way, ignore the whole land effect thing. It really doesn't do anything in the game. Only, and as you see, the turns are different, because Max got to turn a lot quicker this time than he did last time. So the turns are randomly determined. Yeah. Uh, ignore land effect, by the way, as it does virtually nothing. It was supposed to do something, but they never actually fixed the bug, and the bug makes it just do nothing. Yeah, but it's supposed to have an effect on your defense, is the thing. Land effect is supposed to have an effect on your defense, that's why it's percent based. But all it now does is limit movement, and that's it. Whereas normally it was supposed to have a much bigger effect on the actual, like, battles, because it would reduce the amount of damage that you would take while standing on it. Yeah, it increases 30% nothing now, whereas before it was supposed to, like, if you're standing on a 30% tile, then you have 30% damage resistance, for example. But something bugged out and yeah. 
I only happen to know this because I do a lot of shiny I do a lot of shiny force ROM hacking as well. Uh, on emulator. True, but they left that part out because of the 16-bit memory limitation. Yeah, they did. 16-bit limit memory limitations. Uh, I, I think Shining Force was originally being developed for like a 32-bit platform or something. I remember they're developing it for a different platform first and then moved it to this. And because of that, some things were axed. Uh, thankfully, there's no cut characters, which is good. But I know some characters, for example, were meant to be found in different ways and have different things, and it just didn't pan out. Like, for example, Kane was supposed to have an entire side story. And also, they never really explain who Max is in this game, but if you look at the Game Boy Advance remake of this game, they then give, like, proper side stories and stuff to both Max and... Uh, some other characters that didn't have enough dialogue. And th because it's like the story that was intended to be told anyway, but they just... memory limitations. So they couldn't put it in the game. So yeah. A lot of this combat, by the way, I'm not even thinking about it. It's just more or less me doing it automatically. <laughs> where I just am doing it and I don't even need to think about the combat in a lot of cases. This time I'm actually going to remember not to even bother to save the freeze, because I won't need to. Uh... Is anyone actually hurt? Yes. Heal Max, please. Uh, you do know why I named the main character Max, right, Thorfinn? It's not because that's my name, because it's not my name. Yep, that's a canon name for the main character. And I always found that interesting, because I only found that out, like, uh, 10 years after playing this game, when I was like 15 or something. I only found that out then. And the only reason why I found out was because I happened to be looking up Shining Force stuff online, and I heard someone mention that. I was like, wait, what? That got me interested into ROM hacking, because I wanted to check the files to make sure that was true, and yep, it's true. Uh, they never actually tell you anywhere in the game that that's what the main character's name is, but it is. Unlike something like Golden Sun, where normally it would like start with uh, Isaac as the main character name, and then you could change it to something else. In this case, it just starts blank, and you can fill in whatever name you want. So it doesn't even start with Max. Just interesting. Uh, did you go for 100% completion when you played the game? Uh, on stream? Orphan? Just curious. Nice to have someone to talk to. Uh, 100% completion to me is getting all the characters and getting all the secret items. Though the secret items are optional, mainly it's getting all the characters. That to me is 100% completion for this game, is all the characters. And then if you also want to, you can also grab the secret items. Okay, yeah. Because, I mean, like, what other metric would you go off of for judging that, I wonder? Because I can't really think of what else you can really do in the game other than, like... No, I don't, I don't think there's anything else you can really do in the game in terms of completion. Really? You missed? He had one health left. Come on! No! Uh... Oh god, please. Okay. I was worried he was going to double me. Great main one too. There are people doing no death parts. Oh, I be fair. But that isn't really like completion. That's more just a challenge. But yeah, I get what you mean. No death parts. Iron Man mode, as they call it. Uh, no, I do not care about Iron Man mode or no death runs or those locks or anything like that. 
I know there's Shining Force Nuzlocke's, which were basically just, uh... You only are allowed to use the characters that you get unlocked, and you can't... Um... No, well, yes, but no. Uh, see, unlike Fire Emblem, when a character dies... Oh, I'm, uh, whoops, hold on. I accidentally pressed the Windows button. When a character dies, you can revive them at a priest for a certain gold cost, but they don't automatically come back. You have to revive them at a priest for a gold cost. As we look here, there's a button called Raise, which, uh... No one's dead, so it says everyone seems okay. But if someone is dead, it would say, "Oh, hey, low is low is down." For example, would you like to pay X amount of gold for to raise him? And the gold amount is directly relevant to his level. So, for example, it's ten gold uh, times the level of the character. So, if it's a level two character, it'd be twenty gold. Uh, so, unlike Fire Emblem, this doesn't have permadeath. But unlike Modern Fire Emblem games, it's not just they come back in the next battle, you actually need to pay money to bring them back. And the higher level they are, the more money it costs, but usually it's such a negligible amount that it doesn't really matter. Uh, if your main if your main character dies, you automatically lose that battle and you lose half your gold. Well, yes, there is that, too. Um... But he more meant the fact that in Fire Emblem games, if a character dies, they're gone for good. They're just dead, dead forever, and there's nothing you can do about it unless you reload a save to try and save them. I think that's what, uh... Surter was referring to. Surter, by the way, is a buddy of mine that I've known for five years now. Alright, I got medical herbs for everybody. Yep, now we can freely explore. Nice, right, so you guys from the US? Yeah, I am. Well, I am from the US. He is from Canada. Uh, I am specifically from USA, Ohio. Cleveland, if you want to be more specific than that. Oh! It's doing the reverse text glitch for Serta right now on Twitch. Uh... Why does five years come up... Uh... Soon... Why does five years come up so often these days? I just mentioned that. It did that to me yesterday, yeah. I think I read what he said. I think he said, why does five years come up so often? And I just mentioned that so that gives people a ball ballpark for how long we know each other. By the way, let's go get gone. Alright, and let's do the preliminary to get Hamtaro for uh, whatever this character's name is. I just always call them Hamtaro as a kid. Uh... It does it to me, like, every day, pretty much. Yeah, but it does it randomly every day. I am gone. I have fought the evil of Runefist for many years. I will aid you. So, Gong is a fist-fighting monk who can also heal people. And he is honestly one of the strongest characters in the game if you actually turn him up. Then again, every character could be very strong if you train them up. Also, this guy will act as a priest, which is not important right now, but will be important later. Gong and Chris are my choice of healers. Oh. I'm usually just rock with Gong as my only healer. Uh, I don't usually find that I need more than one when I do playthroughs. And I just mainly have healing items on people as like my other source of healing. I wish there was a consistent way that you could buy uh, rain showers. Or whatever those items are called. Shower of Cure, I believe is what it's called. I wish it was a consistent place you can buy those, because that'd be cool. Uh, to be able to stock up on those. Healing Rain. That's it. Healing Rain. I was thinking Shower of Cure or something.
So that'd be nice if I could just get a consistent amount of those, because that'd be probably one of the best healing things to get, in my opinion. But the problem is you can only ever find them in chess, so it's really hard to buy them. Because you can't buy them, so you only get a limited number of them. So usually I just either end up wasting them or I just end up not using them because... Or I just end up selling them to buy something else. Uh, yeah, Guns equips with the Valkyrie is like my favorite combination for Endgame, just in terms of like, I have a giant take equipped with a ranged weapon, and it's really cool. And the Valkyrie Lance is a really cool lance. I wish spellcasting rods actually had effects on their magic. They don't, I just wish they did. It just affects the attack power of the monk, which doesn't matter. You don't even need one equipped on them at all. It just... you know. Ugh. I know when I made a wrong pack of this game, that was one of the things I added, was the ability to buy healing rings. Uh, just as an item later on in the game, which is quite nice. Because they have a price in game, but when you first get the power staff, Chris has the highest attack of your whole force. Ah! Oh! Surprising! I did not actually think, uh, realize that, but that is surprising. I guess it depends on how trained up your force is, but yeah. Chris is pretty strong. He's, he hits above her weight class, certainly, for the time that you get her. Here's the question, Thorfinn. What was the last character you found out how to get in this game? Like, what character took the longest to figure out how to get? Or did you just look up a guy to find all that? can't heal anyone right now, sadly. I latched my foot off when I saw that. Probably Kokichi. Uh... I'm trying to remember who Kokichi is. Is Kokichi the samurai or the ninja? Or is it someone else? Let me double check on my tablet. Oh, he's the Sky Knight. Okay. For me, it was the ninja, just because I never stopped to think to check that bush in Chapter 8. <laughs> that was the last character I had to find out, because it never occurred to me to check the bush with a flower on it. Looking up how to get him on my tablet. Because. Uh, do, do, do. Honestly, my, one of the uh, least favorite class, in my opinion, for this game is mainly just because the knights, just because of how many knights there are. It's kind of annoying how many knights there are, though when they promote, they're actually not bad. Just am not a fan of them early on. So they have more mobility, but their stats suffer as a result. I value stats more than mobility, usually.
Hmm. <sighs> May is the strongest tonight. Yeah. Especially given the time that you get her. Uh, I wish you can get access to the shield ring. You remember the shield ring? That's like an enemy exclusive ring. It's like one of the only enemy exclusive pieces of equipment. And it's for no real reason other than they never gave you an opportunity to get one. For some reason. It's like, it doesn't even see, it's not even that good. It's just, I wish you had access to a shield ring. That would be nice. But no, they'll never give you an opportunity to buy one, or find one in a chest, or loot one off a of body, or whatever. Which is very strange, but whatever. But you do see monsters equipped with it on occasion. In, in uh, very specific fights, for example, they have monsters equipped with it. And I know the white ring does what the shield ring does, but just a bit better. But I mean, it'd be nice to still have the shield ring. Just the day we have it. But yeah, game does, uh, death does not have much consequence in the game. All things considered. But yeah. Ah, uh, this is typically my content. I do chill, casual streams. And it's best when I have someone to talk to. Otherwise, which is doing this, so. Uh, yeah, so right now, it, things are pretty simple right now, mainly just because we don't have much that we can do. We have, we have a pretty small party and pretty simple mechanics. We'll start getting more complicated stuff later. In particular, the next fight after this one, uh, once we get through this one, is one of my least favorite fights in the game. I say one of, because the desert is also a pretty terrible fight, too. Both instances of it is a pretty terrible fight. And that's mainly because of how freaking slow it takes to get out of a certain area. And to move. In certain areas. And that's the only reason why. It's not even that it's particularly hard, though the desert fight is actually relatively difficult. It's more just the fact that... Uh, also the fight to get to the Skull Castle is the one. That one does suck, but at least you don't have mobility problems in that one. To be fair, usually by the time you get there, you're a bit more prepared, and you actually have more, like, mobility options. But that fight is very, quite hard, yes. In terms of actual difficulty. It's not a slog, but it's hard. Oh, really? Well, let's finish off the Dark Dwarf, if Salute didn't feel like it. The mountains are impassable, and the enemies can both like crazy. I mean... I'm not really remembering that. I mean, I, I, maybe I just blocked it from my memory or something, but... I really had that much of an issue with that one. And my dad in the other room. Has anyone leveled up in this battle? I forget. Oh well, I feel like ending this battle. So for now, I'll end it. Oh, someone leveled up. Okay, I'll go ahead and repeat this battle then. Let's egress out and do that again. Oh yeah. Do 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 Oh, I'm vaguely remembering that one battle that you're talking about now, yeah. Uh... It never gave me trouble in the past, is basically what ultimately came down to. It never really gave me trouble. 
Yeah, we're doing quite a bit more damage now, which is quite good. Quite good indeed. I will say, though, treasure this first fight, because this first fight, while easy, uh, the difficulty ramps up in the next fight after this. And this game does have a tendency to just randomly ramp difficulty up without warning. So, this definitely has some difficulty clips in terms of the video game. Though, while it seems easy right now, this is the introductory fight, and it's meant to be. It gets quite a bit harder after this. Not that it will necessarily be, like, super hard, because I have most of the fights in Uh, what's your opinion on the final battles? Like, between the big, the final boss, and then the other final boss? I'm curious what you think of those, Thorfinn, because those are some of my favorites of the actual game, but... I'm curious what you think of those. They're relatively easy fights by the time you get there, but... I mean... Grant, granted, Laser Alley is devastating. <laughs> yeah, they are very easy. Uh, the only real danger there is, as I said, Laser Valley, which even then is not a super big difficulty. It, really, the fight before that against that one hero dude is a lot harder than the actual final boss. Arguably. And even then, that's not even that hard. The laser guys are easy to kill with mages. Yeah! If you weren't... If you don't do what I did as a kid, where I was dumb and I was like, Just get through it as fast as possible! And that was my entire strategy. And sometimes it doesn't exactly work and it just gets blasted. Because for some reason, as a kid, I wanted to just ignore them and not actually fight them. That was a random lag fight for no reason. Yeah, but yeah, you can actually kill them with ranges. Uh... Yeah. I am not the best at video games, of course. Even though I have this game mostly memorized, I am not the best at video games. I live with myself a casual gamer for a reason. I am not professional in any of The cane battle can be pretty difficult. Yeah, and the one in the field against that dude with the red outfit that I forget the name of. I am terrible at remembering names. I'm going to throw that out here now. But that one in the field where you fight him in, like... You know, that one general dude against all of those cannons and stuff. That one's actually... While it's really cool, it's also rather difficult. Elliot, that's it. Elliot. Yeah. While that one's really cool, it's also rather difficult, especially if you're not prepared. Yeah, I thought someone was heard. Which is the way they just have, like, their health bar above their head. I find it funny that Max gets more HP over time. I'm sorry, I find it funny that Max gets more MP over time, despite the fact that he never actually gets any other spells other than Egress. I always found that to be like a really weird thing. I don't know why he gets more MP over time if he only ever has Egress as a spell. Oh, Gong's dead. That's unfortunate. Oh well, not big surprise. We'll just try this again. How long are we in the street? An hour and nine minutes in the street. Okay. Yeah, I'm not in a hurry to be just a dining pasty. After all, I will be doing lots of six hour streams of it, so you get some long jump piece of that. Uh I might actually Uh, let's finish off the Dark Horrors, and then we'll head out of here. Let's 
heal. I'm going to be honest, I didn't actually expect to find someone today on stream who also really likes this game as much as I do. <laughs> but, so that was a pleasant surprise. Oh, Max is dead. Okay, I guess we're leaving that way. <laughs> Whoops. We lost half our money. Not that that matters that much. Uh, I need to remember the raise gone. Well, that was a pleasant surprise. Rip. Yeah, it happens. Fun surprises, indeed. I hope you will join us next time as well, uh, next time we do this, which will be next week on Tuesday. So where are you from, uh, Thorfinn? Where are you from? You asked us about where we're from, so we're going to ask you where you're from. In, uh, Indiana. Cool. I'm an Ohioan who grew up in California. We wait for it to be the enemy's turn. I want to close my window, but... Yeah, there we go. So I'm starting to get a little cold. Indiana is a state, not a country. It's a state in the United States. I'm 99th century. It's okay, sir. Turner is a Canadian, so... Yeah, he doesn't have the United States states memorized. Granted, I don't either, but I do recognize that name as a state, at least. <sighs> yeah, we got about an hour and 45 minutes left in this stream. Really, an hour thirty if I actually look at the time. Because I'm going to be streaming until 4 p.m. Indiana is next to Ohio, to the, to the west. Yep. So we actually live just a state apart from each other, which is neat. That reminds me of a funny meme I heard. It was a. Uh... There's a meme of, like, someone arguing that there's 50 states, someone arguing that there's 51 states. Uh, sorry, yeah. Someone arguing that there's three states that matter, someone arguing that there's four states that matter, matter, and then the smug kid in the background knowing there's 50 states in the USA. <laughs> I just find that meme funny because I'm like, that's not the type of states they're talking about, but sure. <laughs> uh... But yeah, it's funny because the majority of my friends aren't from the U.S. It seems. I don't know if you heard that. That was a door closing in the background. I don't have much to talk about right now, honestly. <laughs> We're gonna complete this battle, though. I don't feel like doing this anymore, so we'll just go ahead and move on from this battle to the next one. After I just beat this. Even if someone dies, I don't care. Uh, because there's no way to repeat battles after you've already done them, sir. I did not mean to heal him. I'm sorry, I meant to heal low, not him. 
But yeah, there's no way to actually repeat a battle once you've already done it, so that's the reason why I'm worried about repeating battles now instead of repeating them later, because it's one of those things of speak now or forever hold your peace, because you won't have a chance to do the game. And this first fight is actually really good for leveling up characters, because it's relatively easy. I know there's a ROM pack for this game that makes a certain character be the main character instead of Max, which is interesting. Uh, have you ever played Shining Force 2, Thorfinn? If so, I'm curious what your opinion is on it. Ah, okay. In my opinion, the second game, uh, the gameplay is better, but the art style is worse. To me, it just kind of looks worse all around. Uh, I don't like the change in art style in Shining Force 2, but that's just me. Can't actually get in there to heal him. Come on. Punch! They fixed the flying evasion issue with Shining Force 2. Yeah, as I said, the gameplay is better in Shining Force 2. It's just, I don't like the visuals as much as I like in the original one. They fixed a ton of things in Shining Force 2, though, in terms of the combat and the gameplay and all that sort of stuff. Like, terrain actually working, for example. Flying evasion, yes. Uh, you want to explain to Surtur what that means? Because I don't remember offhand. I just kind of know generally what they're referring to. I don't remember the specifics offhand, though. And Max died again. That's unfortunate. I guess we're repeating the battle again. I did not intend to do that, but whatever. Yes, I'm being reckless with my people. I know that. I don't care. Because death hardly matters. Do 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 Death is an illusion. Uh yeah, arguably. Uh flying enemies in this game have two times the chance to evade attacks than those in Shining Force 2. Yeah. In uh, Shining Force 1, if you were a flying enemy, you had a multiplied chance to evade attacks that you weren't supposed to have. Which is why bats are so freaking annoying in this game. Like, atrociously annoying in this game. You thought bats give me trouble in Dead Cells. They give me a lot more trouble in this game than they do in Dead Cells. <laughs> Because bats are like freaking impossible to hit. They also fixed the movement in Shining Force 2, though you never really saw the movement bug in Shining Force 1, so hate bats. Plus the chance to sleep when they get hit. Yeah. Uh when they hit you. If you don't know, bats not only are dodge basically everything for the most part, they're very much ultra instinct bats before ultra instinct was a thing. But also they don't do much damage to you, but when they hit you, they have a chance to make you fall asleep. And considering they can fly, they can move very fast, and they do very little damage, and they're also really hard to hit, they're going to get a lot of hits off on you. And so their chance to put you to sleep is really high, and guess what? Sleep in this game doesn't wear off if you take damage. It only, wear off, it only wears off after a certain amount of time. So, your character will just be stuck sitting there, swarmed by like three or four bats, 
and just be continually packed to death. Over and over and over again. And there's like nothing you can do about that. Other than maybe eventually hit them, maybe, kinda. You know? It's like, what... As a kid, I always thought there was like a 10% chance to even hit a bat at all. And here's the thing, there's nothing in the game to actually give you better accuracy. I'm like, pretty sure. There's nothing in the game that gives you better accuracy, it's just... It just is what it is. Low increase in level, yay! Other flying enemies aren't nearly as bad as bats are, but bats in particular are just incredibly annoying. And there's not much you can do about that. And the early parts of the game is notorious for the amount of bats that they throw at you. And there's also one part later that's a bit notorious for the amount of bats that they throw at you. But it's... Th the problem is you get mostly front-loaded by bats in the early game. Because of how many are in the early game. And then they kind of disappear for a while. And then the stronger variants of bats show up. And then they kind of disappear for the rest of the game. So they're only a nuisance for a little bit, and none of the other flying enemies seem nearly as bad as they are. It's just them that are so bad at it. At least from my own experience. I mean, granted, the dodge rate of the flying enemy is quite high, but it's just... Yeah. We hear you, truck. You don't need to be honking your horn like that. Yay, Colin got a kill finally. Then you leveled up. Uh, now this has me thinking that Skywalker meme of uh, I, I hate sand. Of course, rock. Well, it gets heavy. <laughs> Yeah, I mainly want to play this game just because I just got done with Dust and Elysian Tale, which is another big nostalgia fest for myself personally, and I'm like, hey, let's follow it up with another nostalgia game. Which is this one, and I'm mainly just playing this so that I can gush about it for a while and show off to my Twitch community and my YouTube community uh, this video game that is very close to my heart. Oh, leveled up more, yay! By the way, uh, there kind of is no maximum level in the game, however, there, uh, limitation-wise, there is. For promoted units, it's level 99. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> oh, whoops. I clicked away from the game. Yep. Yeah, I enjoy this game quite a bit. I mean, for, like, eight years of my life, this game kind of was my childhood. This was what I spent most of my time doing on weekends when I was at my dad's house. It's just playing Shining Force on the living room floor with one of those giant, like, arcade controllers that you stick on the floor. And just using one of those and just playing it over and over on the TV. You know? Trying to get through battles and all that sort of stuff. While my dad watched war movies in the background. And it was the way I was able to just kind of tune out the world and be happy. You know, it was one of the happiest things. It was one of the things that made me the most happy back then. 
Uh, and it, I was at my dad's house. I could drink Coke. I could drink Coca-Cola, and it was awesome. You know? Because that's something that I wasn't allowed to drink when I was with my mom. I was not allowed to drink some. Uh, but with my dad, I could. So was, I just drink some Coke and, you know, play Shining Force all day, and it was really awesome. Anyway. Ooh! You have one here, but Lord Kane of Runefist is even now attacking Guardiana. If that creature spoke truly, we must return to help defeat Guardiana. To help defend Guardiana, sorry. The earthquake blocked the road. Head north, but be ready for a battle. No one, has, no one enters Guardiana while we live! Protect Soul! Death to Guardiana! Death to Guardiana! So yeah, uh, we have no access to the priest right now, and if we wanted to have access to the priest, we would go here, because he allows us to have access here, but this strip right here. It's so hard to get out of this section in any time period. It's like, oh hey, I want to move up. Well, I can't stop on my own units, so I just kind of have to pass. Thank you. If you're wondering how I'm doing that voice, I'm talking into my hands. I'm doing this. <laughs> and I'm doing that to represent the fact that they're wearing helmets, by the way. <laughs> Uh. Yep. The bad guy is speaking into his helmet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is quite form fitting. I like this helmet. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I'm having fun with it, definitely. I didn't plan to do that, by the way. That was just an impromptu thing I thought to do with the guy. I was like, oh, hey, talk into something. I'll talk into my own hand. And it just sounds good. <laughs> so I'm like, why not? I might do that in my D&D campaign. Which, by the way, if you don't know, uh, new person who is here, that, uh, yeah, Thorfinn. Yep. Uh, I am going to be hosting a D&D campaign. Uh, not today, but on the 26th of this month, called The Oncoming Storm. Uh, and I will be streaming it. It will be Saturday, the last Saturday of the month, and we have six players involved in it. It's going to be all seven of us on stream, all playing on Roll20, and yeah. So, be sure to tune in to that very special episode if you'd like to see Session 1 of the Oncoming Storm. I'm even going to have another live streamer on there playing at the same time, which will be Blue Draconics. If you have to know who they are. Alright. <laughs> uh. Yay, Hans can actually get a shot in. Yeah, mountain terrain and desert terrain are the slowest to move across, and this choke point is annoying, mainly just because it's not hard, it just takes forever to get through it, that's all. Goblin. Punch you in the face.
I'm tempted to look into getting a voice modulator, like just a piece of software I can run to try and like see if that can help me do different voices, but I'm honestly I don't know if I even need to do that. Because I'm not that bad at voice acting. I'm not great at it, but I can do it reasonably well. It's just getting different voices for all different characters is kinda hard to do. No. kind of hard to do this sort of thing sometimes. Just yeah. the old vocal cords. Because, yeah, I don't have a very wide range, but I'm not very practiced at those Plus, it doesn't help, there's always the whole factor of your voice sounds different in your own head than it sounds to other people, and that's mainly because while you're talking, uh, the vocal cords are vibrating your own skull, which is adding that own noise into what you're hearing. Meanwhile, uh, what you actually sound like to others doesn't include that. So, usually speaking, your voice sounds different to you than it does to other people. And that's mainly just because you're not just hearing your own voice, you're also hearing all of the vibrations that is happening throughout the upper half of your body because of you speaking. If you did if you never knew the science of it, there's a science of it as to why listening to yourself in a recording sounds different than how you actually sound when you yourself are talking. this battle, I'm going to go get some more water because I'm actually thirsty. I need some more water. I need to hydrate. And I don't have channel points right now, so I can't have people periodically remind me to hydrate. Luke is such a very strong person. Luke and Bort are some of my favorite characters in the game, just in terms of, like, they're so useful from run to run. Like, in every single run I do through the game, I almost always have Luke and Gort on my team, just because they're very solid fighters, and they're just really good on the battlefield. Oh! We've unlocked Blaze 2! That means that now we can hit multiple goblins at once, instead of just one. It will always be in this pattern, a cross-shaped pattern. Uh, so now we can hit all three of them at once, but it costs more magic to do so, and it's also a stronger attack. So it's hitting for 9 or 10 points instead of 7. Or, sorry, 8. I think it's hitting, I think it's hitting for like 8.5. Nope, it does not hit your ally. None of your own magic will hit part of... Uh, Friendly magic will not hit enemies, and enemy and uh, enemy specific magic will not hit friendlies. So you don't need to worry about burning your own allies to a friend. This game's very forgiving in that regard. So it's the equivalent of in D and D just um, uh, launching a fireball point blank at someone, and none of your allies get affected, but all of the enemies around you get affected. It's not very realistic, but it's very nice of the game to do that, because that way I don't have to worry about burning Max, for example, as I would have done there. And 
And I figured the other dude started lurking, which is okay. Lurkers are workers. I don't mind them lurking. Lurking is perfectly fine by me. Oh, I almost skipped Ken's turn. That would not be good. Yeah. Some weapons in the game have a range of two, some weapons in the game have a range of one. Uh, for the most part, most melee weapons in the game have a range of one, however, some of them have a range of two. Usually the lance. Uh, it's pretty much exclusively some of the lances have a range of two, as well as uh, the bow can only hit at a range of two. Technically, this is a range of one to two. Whereas both melee weapons have a range of 1, the lance has a range of 1 to 2. However, the archer has a range of 2, meaning he cannot hit directly in front of him, but he can hit two spaces away. That's how the range is for. Uh, since there's only one target, I'm just going to use blaze 1, because blaze 1 costs less magic. Yeah, to use a D&D term, you can basically upcast magic. What you learn how to. Uh, if you'd like to join me in the live stream, not just in terms of on Twitch, but actually in the stream chat, uh, I am on my Discord server currently, and I am in stream chat. So if you are someone that I have permitted to speak it on stream, you can hop on there and we can chat. You know, while we're streaming, and everyone will be able to hear you. I just have a role on my server, specifically, uh, to make sure that I don't just get random people hopping into the stream, yelling whatever they want and leave. You know, it has to be someone I at least know won't just randomly troll me that way. But most other streamers I know and stuff, most other people I know that are reasonable, uh, are on that list, including you, sir. Hmm. Hmm. I'm tired. Uh. So far, this fight is not well. So I'm gonna change my role for the whole battle. Thing. I'm gonna change it to uh. If I die in a battle, then I will uh, reset the battle. But so far, none of my characters have died, so I will not reset this battle. That way, it just goes by a little quicker. But if I, re if I, if one of my characters dies, then obviously I need to restart it because I want to beat every battle without a death. But I don't really care about like characters dying. I just. I'm doing that as an excuse to train up my character. It's not like I'm doing a speed run or something, which speed runs of Shining Force are pretty horrible because of how much RNG is in this game. Luck is a very big factor in this game. And there's not much you can do about it. There's luck everywhere. Pretty much every single attack in the game has like a 5% chance to crit or a 10% chance to double. That's like it, you know. And there's nothing you can do about that. Uh, magic cannot double, but magic can crit. Also, see, Han can attack two spaces away, but not one space away. Yeah, I guess if you have lots of crits, or you move first, or you can cut down on your time a decent amount. Definitely. Uh, remember I mentioned the whole agility thing, it's entirely random who goes first, but it's somewhat informed by agility. But it's not like D&D where it's a strict turn order, or Fire Emblem where you move your entire force at once. It's more or less, it just arbitrarily chooses to give someone a turn or not. You know, so... You know what? I'm gonna actually have you hang back and use the herb. Herbs heal for 10 HP. And they cost and uh, they cost 10 gold. So they're relatively cheap but also relatively useful. Uh, but yeah, this game is pretty 
horrible in terms of speedrunning just because you have to have lots of RNG to go your way just to get a good run. So most of the time when people do this, they just do pass and they don't do an actual like legit speedrun in terms of someone live doing it. Mainly just because that way it's at least enjoyable. Also, unlike Fire Emblem, uh, oh god, that was a double crit. So the first one was a no one, it doubled, and then that second strike was crit. Uh, anyway. Um, so unlike Fire Emblem... What did I say? Unlike Fire Emblem, when you attack an enemy, they don't get a chance to hit back. So... You can attack knowing that they won't get a chance to hit back, which is actually quite interesting, because that means that you basically... It means that enemies get chances to hit you without you being able to kill them in the process. And the only way you can actually kill an enemy is by having your unit attack in. Because I know something in Fire Emblem that's often the case is where you can get units that, quote, break upon your units, which is basically where... They throw themselves at your unit, but and they do a little bit of damage, but then they also die in the process because of how much damage your unit does back. But here, that won't happen because they'll hit the unit and they won't get attacked back. So your guy's going to have to physically, on his turn, attack one of the enemies. Bats battles must be pretty RNG heavy in the speed one. Yeah, definitely. The bats are horrible in the casual playthrough, let alone in a speedrun. Yeah. That's quite hard. Quite difficult. Yep. Quite a bit difficult. Uh, I would not want to ever speedrun this game. <laughs> this game is a whole heck of a lot of fun to play casually. But this is never something I'd want to speedrun. Forever. Then again, I'm not a big fan of doing speedruns, too. I like watching speedruns, but not doing them, really. Double two. Well done, Shining Force. Now enter Cordiano. That's all. Well done, Shining Force. Now enter Cordiano and find out what's happened there. Will do. Thank you, Nova. I like watching the crazy stuff viewers come up with. Yeah. Also, Sombertum. You made it back. You're a little late, but we're all, we were almost overrun by Runefist. We held them off, but we suffered greatly, as you'll see as you wander around. Most of our knights were lost in the battle. Many homes are damaged, but we held. We'll keep watch here. Runefist is bound to attack again, sooner or later. Thank you, soldier. So yeah, uh, everything is, lots of stuff is destroyed, lots of people are hurt. We have damaged civilians. Their commander, Kane of Rudenfist, evil to the core. Now we go talk to Gord. You know, that little fracas made me want to fight again, Max. I'm joining up. Gord joins the Shining Force. That's the name of our force, by the way, so title drop. All be at headquarters. By the way, these are shops. Shops will always look like this. Uh, the person on the right is the one that sold his herbs. However, we talk to the person on the left now. Welcome, Max. Those vile Rufus have made me mad. I have weapons guaranteed to knock those monsters' heads off. Take a look. Mm. And we can buy... Uh, excuse me. Mm. Excuse me, we can buy weapons. However, the only things I'm interested in here is buying a hand axe right now. Because we can give the hand axe to Luke. Oh. 
Right, Luke has medical items. I forgot about that. I'll give it to Gordon. Then we'll have the trade items. Transfer that hand axe over to Luke. So each character can hold four items at once. And there is no, like, supply track or anything, so this is your inventory. Your inventory is entirely dependent on how many characters you have and what they have on them. You, uh, if you try to pick up an item and your inventory is full, it will say your inventory is full and you need to transfer that item to someone else's inventory before you can, uh, pick it up out of the chest. Anyway, I am going to go get some water and go to the bathroom, because I am thirsty. Yeah, they fixed that issue in Shining Force 2. And if you do, uh, if you open up the Shining Force 1 editor that a lot of the fan community made, um, you can, there's a flag you can tick to fix that. I'll be back. Let's get up, stretch, grab a drink, grab a snack, and we will return in a moment.
parents. Turns with a pepper jack cheese stick and a big old glass of uh, fruit punch flavored water. Using that Mio stuff. So. Let's continue exploring this tragedy caused by Rune Fist. Or Rune Fist, depending on which way you want to pronounce it. Is the priest okay? Yeah, the priest's okay. Okay, soldier. We won, but what about the next attack? Yeah. These are specifically wounded soldiers, by the way. If you're wondering what that sprite was supposed to represent, because I know as a kid I couldn't figure out what this sprite was supposed to represent. It's an armored dude sitting down on the ground with a sack behind his back. And he has blue hair. Hurry, Max! King of Rufus has injured the king and Lord Burius! Uh oh. Go away, Kane! Go away, Kane! Don't understand what you're talking about. Anyway, the treasure of Guardiana is in my hands now. I won't let you take that. Just believe. Lord of Darkness, show me your power. Ah. Uh. Varios has died. No, oh, father, I can't believe it. Oh, oh. Oh, Guardiana is unworthy of my attention. Farewell, fools. That's one bad news. Max, look to the king. Hey, Max. Hey. I don't think I'll live much longer. Though Varius protected me. Listen, the gate of the ancients is the only access to the tower. And the gate can be opened only by the key. You must find it before it falls into the hands of evil. You should never let them open the gates. Point out why Rootfrist is interested in the gate. Please. May, daughter of the great Varos, help us. It's your father, and be strong. Your Majesty. <clears throat> Your Majesty. Please tell my daughter, Henry, in Manorina to stay strong for her people. The king has died. I'm aware, but I have them on purposefully because this is how I look on an old TV. This is how the game looked originally when I played it back on my tiny little tube TV. So, I have them on on purpose. Plus, it makes the graphics not look as bad. Though, now that I'm looking at stream, it does look a little strange. But, nah, I'll keep them on. If they bother you, let me know, but... I like having them on, personally. Now is not the time for tears and grief. Alteron should be our next goal. Max, let's go find that key. I don't want any more of these tragedies. May joins the Shining Force. I'll await you at headquarters. Be quick! I did not do female voice as well, I am sorry. I am not a professional voice actor by any regard. Uh. 
Yes, that's all we, that we need here. Do, 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 Here's the first of the bats! You're gonna get to see the bats now, sir, and uh, we were not kidding about the bats. There's lots of them here. Now with my ROM pack, they're even more annoying, because I add even more of them. Because <laughs> I, I made a hard mode ROM hack in this game. And yeah, I add even more of these things. All right, Ken, do your thing. Ah. Uh. Oh, right. I need to remember to actually equip um, Luke with the axe, because currently Luke is not equipped with the axe, and that's something that you don't normally think about it. It's the fact that the game doesn't automatically equip items for you. Luke doesn't have a weapon equipped currently. So I need to remember before I hit an enemy with Luke that I actually need to equip that axe. And... That's Max. Also, let me turn the game down a little bit, because it's a little loud in comparison to my own voice. There we go. The sound design in this game is awesome, though. Let me know how the audio is. Can you hear me okay over the game? Come on, Gork. Let's do this. Nice. Leveled up to level five. Cool. Oh god, here we go. The bats have begun. They have targeted Max as their first victim. Only did one damage. I didn't put him to sleep, thankfully. Hans? You're on bat duty. Yep, that's a miss. It has begun. The misses have begun. Max, can you hit? <laughs> it's kind of funny with how silly it is. It's annoying, but it's funny. In my opinion. Uh, can you attack this guy? It's a double crit! That's cool, good job. Oh, they're always appreciated. It's not always guaranteed to be a crit if it's a double. It just occasionally happens, and it's pretty nice. Luke can stop this guy. But yeah, like Dead Cells, this game is very precise about its numbers in a lot of cases, in terms of just... Uh, it always does, like, the same damage each time if you compare the numbers directly. Also, by the way, before you ask, uh, no, these are not people riding horses. These are actually centaurs. May and Ken are both centaurs. They're not people riding horses. 
uh, I've actually, uh, it took me like, it took me an embarrassing long, embarrassingly long amount of time to realize that they're centaurs and not actually just people riding horses. And by embarrassingly long, I say I didn't realize that until I was like 12. So, like, six years, roughly. But yes, they're actually sent on. talking less by the way I'm also eating that's part of why I can't get up there to heal Ken Zap so I'll just have you heal uh X real quick. Three twenty six. All right, so we got about thirty minutes left in the stream, roughly. Uh, Sentinel five BRB. Okay, take care, sir. Increased to all the five. this, uh, well, after a half hour, I should say, uh, we're going to go find someone to raid. That'll be fun. Uh, get up there and heal Ken. Since you can. Oh, May is also really hurt, actually. I forgot that May was really hurt. Heal May first. May has less total HP. I remember Ken was always the one that got lots of HP, and May was always the one that got lots of defense. that reverts. Ken is the one that always gets lots of HP, and May is the one that gets lots of defense. I'm not sure if I said that the first time, but I'm saying that now, because that is how it usually does. By the way, they both threw in lances, and technically I could have bought a spear in the last town for May, but I didn't think of it. And also, switching between Spear and Not Spear is kind of annoying. And we're still attacking Bat. Oh, we finally hit it! Yay! Five damage. Dwarf! Attack the Dwarf! The big Dwarf.
Yo. Another cake, yay! And they put Max to sleep. Okay. Well, there's a sleep mechanic. Yay, we killed that bat. That was one bat. There is three up above. It's all five nights. So, we're, we're still going to have to deal with the three bats and the five nights of Freddy's. <laughs> Back. Oh, reverse, uh, reverse talking again. No. <laughs> Point of the day. Yeah. Welcome back. Four minutes to kill one of the bats. Yay. Nah. We got through this first area without anyone dying, but we still need to deal with these three and the five knights, which I made a joke earlier about being, uh, dealing with the three bats and the five knights friends. Okay. And those five knights have a tendency to all gang up on one person and just destroy them immediately, so... Who's hurt? Oh. Yep. Luke? Yep, definitely. Let, let's go heal Luke. Uh, not loot. Luke. Luke, I am your father. Sorry, not Luke. Ken. I meant Ken. Having out of the web browser solved the issue. Wish I could record it at some point, but I would need have OBS open at all times when I'm watching a stream. Yeah, that would be weird. Uh, also, you missed Max falling asleep, and now Max woke up. Fun fact, unlike what would usually be the case, uh, Max, uh, falling asleep in this game, you don't wake up when you take damage. You don't wake up until a set time limit, whereas with most things, if you take damage while asleep, you wake up. But in this game, no. You'll just keep taking damage while asleep. Until uh, the timer for sleep eventually runs out. Yeah, so it's like sleep in Pokemon. Uh, except, combine that with the whole randomly determining turns mechanic, and you can imagine how silly that can get, when you also remember that bats have very high agility, meaning they get more turns more often. <laughs> And so your character in the sleep timer only increments uh, each time your character gets a turn. So it might take like a little bit to get back from sleep. It might take a long time. It depends on how many turns your character actually gets. <laughs> That's why it's actually really annoying, because sometimes you just have the bat sitting there attacking you forever. And it's like, what can I do? And here's the thing, uh, it's like Gen 1 Pokemon in the whole fact that when you wake up from sleep, it eats your entire turn to do so. So you can have it to where it's like, oh hey, Max woke up from sleep. A couple of bats attack him, and he's asleep again, and now we can't do anything else. So, a knight in heavy armor tends to sleep longer because they're less agile. Got it. Yes. Yes, that is actually a thing. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that is so silly, but it works that way. And as I said, it works like Gen 1 sleep in the whole fact that 
one, it's random how many turns it lasts, but also two, uh, when you do wake up, it eats your entire turn. You can't do anything on that turn, so it's very likely that you wake up and they just put you right back to sleep again. So, you can get a single character just attacked by bats for a very long time and get the peck to them. Also, hello, knight. Yeah, those knights do a lot of damage right now. Uh, Gort, help Tao out. Run in and smack them. Uh, heal Tao, please. After run out of healing magic, uh, 8 MP, by the way, is the amount of, like, magic points, or whatever it's called, that you use for spells. And each spell costs a certain amount of magic points. For example, Heal 1 costs 3 magic points. Blaze 1 costs 2 magic points. And Blaze 2 costs 5. So, for example, I can't use Heal 1 anymore on Gong because he has 0. And I also can't use it anymore on Lo because he only has 1. Uh, uh, with Tao, I could use... Blaze 2, two different times, or I could use Blaze 1, five different times. So, yeah, that's how magic works in this game. And it's over here. Obviously, Luke doesn't have any magic. Here's three bats over here. Uh, can you help with the knight? No, um, no you can't. So, just go smack a bat. Hey, you actually hit it. It's very random how often you actually hit bats or not. Oh. You got smacked. Use a medicinal herb on Gort, please. Covered for hit points. Yay. Do 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 As I said, this game was made back in 1993, and that was back in like the heyday of experimental games where like the on the genres and tropes weren't really nailed down yet, so people were just kind of throwing mechanics in that they kind of felt were good, and there wasn't any, like, rigid, like, oh, hey, this is an RPG, it does this, 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 you know? So, this game is very unique in its own parts. Also, this game came out before Fire Emblem, I want to point out. So, in a lot of ways, if you wanted to, you could say the mechanics of Fire Emblem were similar to the mechanics of this game, just tweaked a bit. Because this game precursor to Fire Emblem. So, it's important not to think that this game took features from Fire Emblem, because actually it would be the other way around, that that Fire Emblem took features from this game. But it's not just this game, there's lots of games in a similar sort of genre and vein as Shining Force. So, it's not even like it would be specifically that. Oh, don't have any items on you. Uh, okay. Attack this knight, kill the knight. Attack this knight and kill the knight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hans leveled up to four. Also, by the way, uh, the levels, the stats that you gain for leveling is random. Uh, characters have growth stats, which determine, like, how likely they are to level up a given stat during a run, but it's just a percentage chance of like, oh, a 30% chance, a 70% chance, etc. So, you can have it so that you get completely screwed over in terms of leveling a specific character if you want to. Uh, because it's like, oh hey, this character just never increases much of their stats, like, ever. And that's it. It's just, you got screwed over. Or you can have a character, like, soar in stats very fast, 
even though they have low chances to do so, just because you got lucky. Oh, and just doubled there, but they missed with the second hit, unfortunately. But yeah, more randomness. More randomness. This game has lots of randomness. This is why I don't really mind RNG in video games, because this was the video game that I've played most of my life. So, and that's not even an exaggeration. So I'm used to dealing with RNG in video games, and to me, if, if a video game is usually notable or weird if it doesn't have RNG in it at any point. I pretty much expect RNG to be in video games. Personally. Based off with my experience with this game. Which is why I said this game has a huge influence on my life, because in many ways it helps shape my taste in video games. Uh, also, May is getting really low. But I don't have any more healing, tricks, so. Unless I want to use a healing item like a medical arm. Um, of course, this was not the only game in my childhood. There was plenty of games I played in my childhood. Uh, in particular, some other notable ones is Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, uh, 007 Goldeneye, um, Smash Brothers, 64, specifically. Uh, I like the Hedgehog to a lesser extent, but I never really liked that game all that much. And uh, Pokemon. Pokemon for the Game Boy, the original Game Boy. That was a game that had a lot of influence over me as well. I was never super big into the Pokemon game. I more preferred the anime, and even then I was never super big into Pokemon. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! was more my jam. In terms of, like, animes I liked watching as a kid, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Dragon Ball Z were my favorite animes. Uh, as a kid. But... In terms of actually playing a game, I was more into Yu-Gi-Oh! than I was into Pokémon. But I had Pokémon Red on my Game Boy, and I also had Pokémon Gold and... Uh, sorry, I had Pokémon Red, and I had Pokémon, uh... Crystal were the two big Pokemon games I played, and one was on the original Game Boy, the other one was on Game Boy Color. And the reason why, part of the reason why those had such big influences over me is because, quite literally, they were the only portable games that I owned, other than, like, my Yu-Gi-Oh! deck. So I played them so often because I played them in, like, car rides and stuff. So yeah, I'd play them in the car and stuff, and it's like, I don't got much option to play, so I might as well play this, and it's one of the most... It's a very enjoyable game. It's probably one of my favorite mobile games I've played. Uh, that's also part of the reason why Fire Emblem had such a big influence on me later when I got a Game Boy Advance, and a Game Boy Advance SP. Because, uh, one of the games that I got to play on those is Fire Emblem, and Fire Emblem Sacred Stones for the Game Boy Advance, and those games were really fun. They were some of my favorite mobile games, like, ever, in terms of, like, on a mobile platform, not as in, like, on a phone, but, like, on a Game Boy, and yeah. If I was out on the go, I would load up those, and I just very much enjoyed them. So yeah, those are some of the nostalgic video games of my childhood, specifically. Not my teenage years, but of my childhood. If we start moving to my teenage years, uh, the games start changing as to, like, what has influence over me and what doesn't. But if we're, if we're talking about the era that Shining Force came from, which is my young childhood, then yeah, those are the big things that influenced me as a kid. Uh, and I'm just talking about that because, one, it gives me something to talk about, but also, two, uh, this game is definitely one of those, and it's very much on topic. And Tuesday is kind of my nostalgia week. It's kind of the nostalgia game of the week, so if I want to play, like, a video game, it's... And I want... If I want to play a video game that's very nostalgic for myself, I'll just play it on Tuesday. That's kind of currently the idea. 
Uh, I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to keep that up, because I don't know how many actually nostalgic games I'll be able to play on Tuesdays. Tuesday is my nostalgia week. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> I misspoke. I apologize. <laughs> also, that's a really cute turtle emote. I, it's, it's my nostalgia day of the week, is what I should say. And that's just kind of arbitrary because I wanted to just put... Yeah, no, no, that's fine. I'm glad it made you laugh. I'm glad it made you laugh. It made me laugh when I read it again. So... But... <laughs> uh, go attack these horsemen, please. No one has died yet so far. But, as soon as someone dies, we're gonna have to redo this fight, and this fight took a long time. As you can see, fights get harder as you get farther in. And, in particular, part of their difficulty is they just end up taking longer to do. The bat keeps dodging, the bat keeps dodging. Yeah. Oh. Hey! I actually killed the knight. Yay. What was I talking about? Oh, right. Nostalgia. Nostalgia week. Which isn't actually a week. It's just a day of the week. Ugh. But yeah. I just arbitrarily end up picking Dust to be on a Tuesday just because I was filling out my schedule at first and I just went, yeah, this day works for this. And so now I'm just going to have Tuesday be the uh, day that I play nostalgia things for my past. I don't know how much of those I'm going to be able to do, but I will try. Um, if anyone has any requests from the games that I have already listed, uh, feel free to ask me, and I will try to play them on stream. Um, I'm not even going to speculate what I'm going to play after Shining Force, because I want to do a full playthrough of Shining Force first, and then we'll talk about that, but uh, for now, I currently am thinking of doing maybe Link to the Past, if I can find a way to do that. Because that's a game that, while it's not a super big part of my uh, childhood, the moments that it was in it, it was one of, if not the, my favorite Zelda game, just in terms of Zelda games. Uh, so yeah. hurts quite a bit. I love the music in this game. I obviously have all the songs memorized by heart because video game music is just my jam. I love video game music. What time is it? Three forty-eight. Okay. Use your herb on Mr. Max over here. We <sighs> <sighs> got about ten minutes left in the stream. Hopefully, I can get this battle done before then, be without someone dying. No one's died! Yay! No one died. Yay. We had managed to do that battle without anyone dying. I forgot to read the dialogue. My bad. 
Uh, there's going to be occasions where I just skip the dialogue because I inst I instinctively skip the dialogue. That's cleared it. Here's the chest. Max discovers a boron slance. Nothing is found. Nothing is found. Opens the treasure chest. Max gains 70 coins. The game interchangeably just calls them coins or gold. I don't know why. Um, we need, uh, we're not going to talk to that person yet. Instead, we're going to go over here. We're not going to talk to that person yet, either. Here's a treasure chest. Battle against a mimic starts. <laughs> this game does not have mimics. But that would be interesting. That is one of the things in D&D &D that I love doing most. It's like, oh hey, the party found a treasure chest. Cool, they successfully picked the lock. Roll initiative. Wait, what? <laughs> I just love that oh shit expression that all the players have when it's like, oh hey, you picked the lock successfully. You can open the chest. Roll initiative. <laughs> the, that that's still some of those powerful words in Dean. That's some of the most powerful words in gaming. Roll initiative. In my opinion. Yeah, there's certain people here that we have to talk to. However, I am not going to actually talk to them yet, and the reason why. Is because I want to show you what happens if I don't talk. So, let's do something kind of mean and push this cart to this woman. What a rude thing to do! Wish I saw your oh shit moment in Dark Souls. You must have encountered a mimic at some point. I did. I did. <laughs> uh, but that was entertaining. Uh. All over, mud all over my new dress. Ark, I can't stand it. I'll get you. And they just shove us into the water. You normally can't enter water. However, she shoved us over here for this treasure chest. And discover a power potion, but we can't carry it. So yeah, um, Max's inventory is currently full, and because of that, we're not actually allowed to pick that up. So, I need to move something over here. Which, that just swapped it out, but oh, our inventory is still full. So, let's drop a healing seed off of May. Let's drop a healing herb off with Port. Let's drop a medical herb off with. Gone. We found a power potion. The this is an item that you can use, and when you use it, it will permanently increase the offense stat of character. There is no way to actually buy those. So there is no way to get an infinite supply of them. However, uh. There's no way to get an infinite supply of them, so there's a limited number of them in the game. However, I am not going to use it right now, and the reason why is when you promote a class, the game checks the stats of the class and to make sure you don't have any stats that are too high in comparison to the class you're about to go into when you promote. It will automatically lower them down to the proper levels you should be at when promoting. Meaning, if you use items to boost your stats permanently, those permanent boosts can sometimes get removed when you promote. So it's better to use the permanent boost items on promoted units, rather than on unpromoted units. Medical Herb! And by the way, you promote units when they reach level 10. However, unpromoted units can go up to level 20 without being promoted. And uh, that's the level gap for unpromoted. So usually it's a good idea to just have them go all the way to level 20. 
There's something else here. Another medical herb. What do you sell? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on, come on in and browse. Nothing but the best here. Ah, you sell healing seeds, uh, medical herbs, and angel wings. What angel wings do is they cast egress when you use them. Um, I was originally not afraid of mimics, then Dark Souls happened, and now you're afraid of mimics. Egress, by the way, uh, when you, uh, it's, if you cast a spell outside of town, if you're in town, it doesn't do anything. However, uh, you heard, like, a whooshing noise. And you see that the actual little picture is a dude being flung high up above mountaintops. Basically, how egress works is if you're in the middle of a battle and you use egress, it will automatically remove you from the battle and stick you back at the last priest that you, were, that you last visited. Allowing you to effectively, one, restart the battle, but also, two, heal your troops. Now, you might be saying, well, wait, if Max dies, you go back to the last priest already, right? Well, yes, but you lose half your gold in the process. E yeah, it's homework. <laughs> Egress is a way to do it without losing half your gold. Like a homeward bone. It's a homeward bone, but as just a thing that you can cast anytime. But only your main character can cast it. The Angel Wing is a way to allow any other character to cast it, besides just your main character, because with how I said turns work, you can imagine how annoying it would be if you want to egress out and your main character is not getting it, uh, and you're waiting for Max to finally get a turn. You can, like, give Angel Wings to other characters, so it's like, oh hey, if any of these characters get a turn, then I can just egress out. Also, by the way, angel wings do not go... They do not get used up. So when you use an angel wing, it's per, it, uh, it doesn't get used up. Angel wings are homeward bones, and egress is the homeward spell. Yes. Uh, that is exactly what it is. Except angel wings are homeward bones that don't get used up. It's all they, it's all they are. Um, but that is the only way to repeat a battle, uh, and to get experience, because you get to keep all the experience and items that you got from the battle. So, if you have, for example, let's say an enemy drops, like, a fire axe or something, which will come up later, uh, you normally can only get the fire axe once, because obviously there's only one of those enemies holding a fire axe. But if you kill the enemy with a fire axe, get it, and then egress out, and you can start the battle again, and that enemy with the fire axe will be there, but you'll still have kept the previous fire axe. So you can effectively get unlimited fire axes that way, which is really nice. Uh, but once you do that battle, you can't ever do it again. Once you actually complete a battle, you can't ever repeat it. So once you've already gotten like your, the amount of fire axes you want, you can't get any more because you can't buy fire axes. So anyway... We want to go into the castle because we want to warn this one person. However, guards are blocking the way. And we ask. You heard him? Beat it! What he say? What? Guardiano was attacked by Runefrist Relish. Get out of here. So the guards don't believe us. Okay. Uh, however, that is because there is a certain person in town we have to talk to. Um, it is this guy. Also, I forgot about this chest. Let me grab this chest. Bitcoins. You, mu you must be Max, right? I knew it. I lived in Guardiana until a few months ago. I just heard a rumor. A friend of mine told me that Guardiana was totally wiped out. Is that true? Yes. I hoped it wasn't true. The friend who told me about it went to inform the castle. But yes, now we need to go back to the castle and they'll let us in. I assume. 
You might need to talk to someone else, uh, but we definitely need to talk to that guy. By the way, if you want to read what this sign does, you can search it, and it says, Private property! Trespassers will be glared at! <laughs> so yes, if you trespass, they will glare at you. <laughs> uh. Yes, we'll be glared at. See, now the guard's letting us through. I, I, honestly, I would clip that if I were you, but yeah. <laughs> the glared at thing. This place is full of chess. Rounds. Wooden arrow, but we can't carry it, so let me get rid of some max of stuff. So give the power potion to A. So obviously the more party members that you have. Uh, the more room you have to just carry items around. Max discovers a wooden arrow. Ooh, who's this fellow? Be very careful when you meet the king. That's all I dare say. name is Chris, and we will recruit her later. Not right now, though. Search. Max gains 100 coins. Max discovers a bread of life. Max discovers a middle sword. Max discovers a defense potion, but can't carry it. But yes, uh, Bread of Life, by the way, is a particular item that, uh, does what the Power Potion does, except instead of boosting attack, it boosts HP. I'll do that. I'll give the Middle Sword to, uh, Luke. is slightly better than the axe. Um, I'll go ahead and keep the wooden arrow on me. Max discovers a defense potion. Can't go in here. No one enters. We have. No one enters! We have important Okay. Who all about you? Talk to a king. Hmm? What? Wounds with the Dark Guardiana? Hard to believe. Follow me, Max. I have I have a tactician we should consult with on this matter. This smells like a trap. Discovers a wooden staff. Uh oh, Knights of Rufus. This can't be good. I'm sorry about this, but I must protect Altero. What? Kane, what are you doing here? Surprise, Max! Altero has already surrendered! Put him in a prison cell. I'll decide how to best dispose of him in a day or two. Kane, you promised that Alteron would not be involved in any of this. That fool will all throw you in the cell with him. Take him away.
<laughs> king came to tell the king to fight, but pain had already convinced him to surrender. Even though I am in prison, I can still perform my duties. How can I help you, a warrior of light? Uh, is anyone dead? Well, let's just see who needs my help. Hmm, everyone seems okay. Can I help you in some other way? Uh, no. May the powers of light be always with you, Max. So, we're stuck in the jail cell. Or does he, do these say anything? No. Those are just towels. And there's not much we can do. We're kind of stuck here. Uh... And someone not following their promises. Why should the state fees of surrender be maintained if the promises related to that surrender are respected? Kind of silly to me. Yeah, but to be fair, Cain has enough power to slaughter them all, so... Though, do they have much choice in the matter? That's the question, because Cain currently holds in his possession the Sword of Darkness. Which is, for lack of better context, a dark lightsaber. For all intents and purposes. It's basically a dark lightsaber. <clears throat> but imagine, imagine a dark lightsaber in an area that doesn't even have like any sort of high technology or anything. And you can imagine how strong that weapon would be. But yeah, the Sword of Darkness is... Oh, the wall is Sword of Darkness and the Sword of Light are basically uh, are, are lightsabers, effectively, in this game. Except they can also do magic. So, uh, yeah, there's not much we can do. Let's go inspect the bars and see if we can get a way out of here. The bars are solid. There's no way to break them. Footsteps approach. The time has come to strike back at Runefist. I'm letting you out. Please help me save Altaro! I'll fight alongside you! I can heal, too! Briss joins the Shining Force. We can't go this way! They'll spot us for sure! There's a secret passage! Use it to escape! I'll be at headquarters! Please be patient a little longer. I'll get you out of here soon! Yes. Briss has now joined our force. Which is quite nice. Do -do -do -do. What time is it currently? Oh, it's 4.08. So actually, this is where I'm going to call the stream. Uh, before the next battle. Uh, I will show you what the next battle is, though. Let's first prepare our force. Okay, we're good. Let's ask for advice from this guy. Well, Mac, are you ready to face the enemy? Advice. The enemy's mages and archers attack fast from afar. Charge towards them quickly. Got the voice I did for him. Uh, anything else? Cool. That is all? Then go down. For the hordes of Runefist are still on the attack. Yes. Uh, I may have just lost all my progress then, I think, but... Because I couldn't save there. I may have to come up with a different solution for this. Because... Yeah. Oh, well, I'll have to come up with a different solution for next Tuesday. Uh, I will get us back to that area. 
um, before the next stream. So we will be right back to that exact spot next time. I might use something different than this. I might use normal em emulation. That'll be my idea. Uh, real quick, I want to test out, see how well this thing actually runs on stream. Uh, if I opened up my normal emulator, which you obviously can't see me going to my files, but... Do I have it on the computer naturally, or is that only in my, uh... That's only in my, uh, bug drive, so I'd actually have to plug in my removable hard drive. Um, let me check that real quick. Doop to do. There's the cord. Where's the other thing? Ah, there's the other thing. Plugged in my removable hard drive. Let's close that. Close that. And I know the stream's supposed to be over, but I'm going to try this before the end just because I want to see if this emulator works or not. On stream. I don't know. I've never tried this on stream. I know that it works well off stream, but this can do some weird things to a computer, I know. So. Uh, let me get game capture. Game capture five. Actually, no. Let's edit the current game capture to capture this thing instead. Are you seeing it? Okay. No, no, you're not. Uh, let me try capturing it a different way. Okay, maybe instead of game capture, maybe I do window capture. That might be better. Yeah, that works better. Now you just do this. You can do that. What what are my controls on this? This is that's actually a good question. Uh, redefine my keys. Uh. Up. Whatever. I'll figure this out before this stream and next. Either way, uh, I might have lost my progress. I'll try to figure out how the stuff goes and. I'll try to have it done by next week. Uh, I'm going to close this, and we're going to go raid somebody. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. Let's see who is on that we can currently raid. Do 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 do. Because, oh, 
I'll figure something out. I'll be able to get it working somehow. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, I just realized I closed my avatar. Whoops. Hold on. I'll be open that again. There I am again. Okay, who else is on? Ooh, there's lots of people on. You're all right. Um, I will braid Blue Draconics because I feel like it, and they are currently on. And they've also uh been a collab streamer with me before, so I'll go ahead and do that. Anyway, uh, stream manager. Raid channel. Get live channel. Channel C follow. Do do do. do. Draconics. Blue. There we go. Start raid. Three, two, one. Right now. 